I've always been short on cash. Ever since I was young, my mom would always get on to me about saving money and preparing for a future. She would always say, if you don't save now, you'll have to save later. She said that with such a stern tone, but I didn't listen. I just wanted things. Nothing more, nothing less. That Lego set needed it. Those playing cards had to have them. I spent almost every cent I earned from mowing grass, my summer jobs, everything. This ludicrous mindset really came back to bite me in the butt when I fell in love with photography. It was a chilly spring afternoon. I had my dog, Lewis, for almost a year at this point, and it was, regrettably, my turn to take him out for a walk. I never liked walks. As a kid, they seemed pointless. Why would I walk with no purpose, only to return to my house again? I would rather ride my bike or skateboard to an exciting new destination. Walks just felt boring, aimless, repetitive. I still feel this way sometimes, but it was this particular walk that changed my perspective for the better. You see, I'm the youngest in my family, which means two things. One, that I'm better than everyone else. And two, my parents spoiled me more than anyone else. While both of my older two siblings had to fight for their right to own a phone at age 17, I got an iPod Touch at age 13. While my siblings argued about strict curfew hours, I just had to come home alive. And when I started to drive, my parents knew that I needed a phone, so I got one. It was nothing special, just a basic phone with that fantastic slide-up keyboard. But a couple of years after getting that phone, I became the first child in the Keter household to get a smartphone. My siblings were furious, and I was rubbing it in. I bragged about the fast processing and the plethora of games that I could download, but I mostly focused on the camera that it had. It was phenomenal, with plenty of megapixels to spare, integrated with top-of-the-line software, all to achieve the best quality image that 2017 phones could offer. It was my holy grail, set up on a pedestal for my siblings to long for. Now, this walk, if we go back for a minute, was something special for me because I had this phone. I was playing music on its speakers as Lewis and I were prancing around my neighborhood. And for the first time, I felt like an adult, responsible for this other creature while listening to my super cool music out loud, all while proclaiming, hey, look at me, adult in the making. And it continued like this for a while, until we walked past this tree. It was nothing particularly special, just a cherry blossom tree. There were hundreds spread throughout my neighborhood, and if we're being honest here, they're annoying to clean up after and maintain. The difference today embedded itself in my eye, a, a metaphorical eye, an artistic eye. It's a term used in the photography community to describe an astute, artistic way of seeing something and capturing it. It's what separates the aesthetic from the unesthetic. I didn't know about this eye when I was with Lewis. All I could think about was how pretty the pink of the flowering cherry blossom streaked across the mostly white petal, like those first few rays of sunshine that protrude from the clouds on those weird foggy yet sunny days. I also noticed the shape of the tree, bending slightly forward like an elderly man bending over to take care of his garden. It didn't look in pain, but a happy complacency with its lack of ability. After pondering for a few moments, Lewis was fed up with this awkward stoppage in our journey and tried to pull away. Yet in that moment, I resisted Lewis's urge to explore and had him sit down. He did not like sitting underneath this already peed on tree, but relented to my command. I pulled out that high-tech phone of mine and snapped a few pictures. I wish I could be more dramatic than that, but Sometimes it's the simplest acts that spawn the most engaging spirits. I've never posted those photos anywhere. They were for nobody but me. And as the days went on, I looked back at them frequently. I noticed details that didn't fit the picture. Colors that looked off and much more. I wanted to go back and take yet another picture of that beautiful tree with my slightly impatient dog staring back at me. But it needed to be better. No, it needed to be perfect. This phone, as cool as it is, wouldn't do it justice. I needed something sharper, more colorful, better in every way. 
I contacted my now longtime photography friend, Brady. He's a tech wizard, and he knows everything there is about cameras, settings, the whole nine yards. And so when I contacted him, he got me in touch with one of his friends that was selling her Canon T3i, which is an entry-level digital SLR camera. Don't let that name confuse you or scare you. It's just a fancier, more professional camera that you see at weddings, that kind of stuff. And I knew I had to save every penny I made from working to afford this camera. That's what I did. I felt like Gollum from Lord of the Rings, hoarding everything to obtain my precious. I learned something the day I bought that T3i that I swore I'd never forget. Working hard yields results. And Lewis looks a hundred times better behind professional photography gear.